How are you guys doing? Uh, something I, I've wanted to do for a while, just haven't had the time, is that I've wanted to go over like some plans that I see, real case scenarios, and talk you through sort of how I might lay out advice for uh, specific individuals or couples based on their circumstances. And I think that doing this will really help people understand, you know, how to implement their own financial plans and sort of piece everything that I kind of talk about together. Uh, I was going to do this uh, a couple months ago. It actually turned out somebody had reached out to me and, and they had a situation very similar to this. And they said, you know, I, I don't want to work with you. I don't want to move my money with you, Kent. I, I want to do it on my own. Can you write a plan for me for a fee? And I said, you know, I don't really have the time right now. Uh, it's something that we want to offer in the future. It's just not something that I can offer right now. Uh, and he sort of talked me into it. He was a nice guy, and I, I, I thought it was a good idea. I said, it's kind of an interesting plan, so I'll do it because I had this idea. And I had worked on it when I didn't have the time, wasn't going to charge him a whole bunch of money, uh, and worked on it till like three in the morning one night when I didn't have time. And then he emailed me the next morning right before I sent it and said, you know, uh, no, I found somebody else to do this for me. And I said, oh my God, this is why I don't write plans for money. Uh, because I don't like getting ripped off for working for free. But anyway, that happens. Let's get into this situation. You'll see a PowerPoint presentation come up, um, and we'll just walk through this scenario. So uh, we've got a single male. He's 60 years old. He retired at 55 years old, and he has an income need of 2350 a month or less. Uh, that's on the high side of what he wanted. He's a resident of Saskatchewan and he wants to reduce his probate for his kids. That was another goal, wants to make sure he can retire, wants to reduce his probate. So those are the main things. In any financial plan, I need to make some assumptions. Some of them I kind of know, but other things I need to guess. Uh, he is entitled to $946 of CPP at the age of 65, and full OAS at 65 if he decides to take them then. We're going to assume an inflation rate of 2%. I do think inflation is going to go up for the next few years, but we're thinking about the long term. Real estate inflation rate of 3%. Uh, rate of return, currently he's actually all in cash. His rate of return is basically zero, but cash generally over the long term should create a 2% sort of rate of return with normal interest rates. Just the last decade has not produced normal interest rates and a life expectancy of 85. This was what he wanted to do. Generally, I plan until 90. He just thought he had a reduced life expectancy. Uh, here are his assets. He's got $165,000 condo. He's got three hundred and fifty-three five in his RSP. He's got a lira with 115,000 in it, a TFSA with 88.5, good amount in his TSA, FSA, and non-registered uh, $41,000, all at the bank, all sitting in cash. Uh, zero liabilities, that's great. I'm not sure what that chest thing means, but anyway, some queen got knocked over. So I'm going to talk about three uh, retirement options for him. The easy way is basically probably what he kind of would have done if he didn't come and talk to me. He could take CPP now. If he wanted, he could start his RIF and his LIF now, take his OAS at 65 and not invest. And then we've got the K4 plan number one, where we could start a partial RIF now use the non-registered to fund his extra needs, start CPP and OAS at 65, and invest conservatively. And then there's the most complicated way. Uh, so we do the same thing until 65 as plan number one, 
And then at 65, we start old age security and GIS. We're not going to have any other income other than old age security from 65 to 70, which allows us to get maximum GIS. And we'll use his TFSA to top up what he needs from 65 to 70, start his CPP at 70, so he'll get a 42% increase in his CPP amount. He'll riff the remainder of his money at 71 and convert to a LIF at 71. So I'll kind of talk you through all of the three options, but that's basically it in a nutshell. So the easy way, 61 to 65, he'll take CPP now, which he's going to get a reduced amount. So it's reduced by 36%. So he's going to get 605 a month. He, he converts to a RIF. He's got a minimum payment of 1555 a month and a minimum lift payment of 506 a month. An annual total of $28,116 after tax basically hits his monthly income goal from 61 to 65. Now he's got these assets at 65. He's got a 2% growth rate and 2% inflation on his withdrawals. So he's basically not getting any returns. He's just getting a real rate of return of zero. Uh, at 65, he'll have a RIF with 260,000, a LIF with about 85. The TFSA, he hasn't touched it. It's grown a little bit. It's got almost 98,000. And his non-registered has grown a little bit. So he's got $486,950 at 65. And now the easy way, 65 until 90. He's got his CPP. It's going up with inflation. I haven't shown that just to make it easier. Now his RIF minimum payment is going to be eleven forty-five a month because it's gone down from 60 to 65. Uh, but now he's going to get OAS, so he doesn't need as much to come out of there anyway. So that will last until he's 89 at that rate. His lift of 372 a month will last until 89 at that rate. And his OAS at 65 will be 615 a month. He's got an annual total of $32,842 before tax and is left with uh, almost $29,000 per year after tax a monthly income of almost $2,400. So a little bit more than he needs. Uh, he should be fine. This is, you know, a really good situation to be in. Basically, this guy doesn't have to invest. He doesn't really have to do anything, and his money will last forever. That's always a great scenario. So here's his assets at 85 based on this growth rate, the inflation rate on withdrawals. His RIF has got about 14,600 left at 85. His LIF, 4,690. He's got almost 146,000 in his TFSA and 66,000 in his non registered account for a total of $231,297 uh, in assets other than his home. Those assets upon death are all of those, plus his home value has grown at 3%. He's got $349,000 there, a uh, total of 580275 Taxes owing, basically going to be none. There will be a little bit on the registered assets, and then probate of 0.7% on all of the assets in there. Now we're going to look at K4, plan number one, years 60 to 64. So he needs approximately 28500 after tax. So he could put his non-registered into a high interest savings account and take out $8,000 per year. And now you can convert any amount of your RSP into a RIF that you want at any point in time. You don't have to do like all or nothing. So in his case, my thought is, okay, let's put $105,000 from his RSP into a RIF. We'll put it into something very safe, and we'll pull $21,000 per year. 
his annual total after tax is going to be $28,500 because he's barely going to owe any tax on that amount because the 8000 the only taxable amount he has is the 21000 per year. He's going to get a tax credit. He's only going to owe about $500 a year in tax. Uh, one way he could invest in the RIF is to put his money into a GIC ladder. So he's got... 21,000 in a GIC that matures in one year, 21,000 in a GIC that matures in two years, and so on. That way they just mature, he takes out the cash, and he uses that to spend until he's 65. Now, this isn't a totally fair comparison because I've also suggested that he invests. Uh, conservatively, I'm going to use a 3.5% rate of return. I'm going to Tell him that at some point we should invest the money. So I probably should have shown option one with him investing the money, but then we could have seen like an apples to apples comparison of all of this, but I didn't. So I uh, live with it, I guess. So his RSP at 65, he's got 267,841. He's got 123,875 in his lira. He's got 95359 in his TFSA, total of $487,000 that he has. Now this is where uh, we're going to change things in option three. But in option two, now he's going to take CPP at 65. He's got an income of 946 a month, OAS of 615. Uh, he's going to pull his RIF to zero. Uh, by the time he reaches 85, so he's going to pull almost 1300 a month. His lift to zero is almost 600 a month. His annual total is $41,469 before tax. Uh, so he's left with 35179 per year after tax. So he's got an excess of 7179 per year which we can basically invest all into his TFSA. We haven't added to it in five years. Uh, so he's going to have that extra, you know, 36000 or $30,000 worth of room. So it'd take him like 30 years. So he will be able to put that excess into his TFSA. Now let's look at his assets at 85 based on the 3.5% growth rate. He's got nothing left in his RIF. Nothing left in his LIF. His TFSA has 294,440 in it for a total of 294,440. Uh, so now he's got his TFSA worth that. His home's worth the same amount in all three scenarios. Total of 643,440. Definitely no taxes owing. Uh, this gives him with the TFSA the option to you know, just designate beneficiaries as his children directly on this account. So basically 100000 could go to each one of them, uh, and that will stay outside of the estate and reduce his probate by basically half. So there's one thing that he can do there. Um, so that's good. You know, he's got roughly $300,000 worth of financial assets, not including his home upon death in scenario two, which compared to scenario one, uh, what did he have? He had, uh, well, he had 580 in total. And I should have looked at this. So 231. So 231 to about 300 or 294. So he's doing uh, quite a bit better. Obviously, a lot. some of that has to do with him investing. And then we're going to talk, talk about option three, which is the best option for him to make the most of his money. It's the most complicated, and I guess this is maybe why I earn money sometimes. So this, this scenario, we're going to get him uh, GIS, the Guaranteed Income Supplement. Uh, the plan from 61 to 65 is the same as the last plan. His assets at 65 are the same as they were in the last one. 
Now what we're going to do at 65 to 70 is he needs about $28,000 after tax. So we're going to apply for OAS. Now we're also going to apply for GIS and he's going to get 919 per month tax free. So he needs about $800 a month to top that up. So we're going to pull that from his tax-free savings account every single month. So 800 times 12, we're going to pull like $9,600 per year out of his TFSA. We need to make sure that his TFSA is invested conservatively because we're pulling money out of it. So we don't actually want to be pulling money out of an account that's losing over a short period of time. But we only need five times, you know, 9,600. So we could put like 50,000 in a TFSA into like a high interest savings account and invest the rest. Um, so his annual total is 28,000 before and after tax. Like he's not gonna owe a dime in tax from 65 to 70 based on this scenario. Uh, now his assets at 70, he's got his RSP, which has grown. So remember we were pulling out a little bit from 60 to 65, then it grew from 65 to 70. His Lira has grown to 133, 449, and his TFSA has got about $53,000 in there. So he's got a total of 475,298. But this is where the reason why this one works, because now we have delayed CPP until 70, which is going to give us a nice 42% boost in his CPP income. So he needs $28,000 after tax. He's got 615 from old age security, 1434 from CPP. So we're gonna go as RIF to zero, from 70 to 85 is 1802 a month. His lift to zero from 70 to 85 is 833 a month. He's got a total of 56,208 per year before tax, an income of 45,704 after tax. He's got an excess of uh, almost $18,000 for after tax for the last. Um, you know, 15 years of his life expectancy in this plan. So the remainder will go into his TFSA and his non-registered account. So now let's look at his assets upon death at 85. Now he's got a TFSA and non-registered, I guess, worth $361,988, which is like 65,000 higher than the higher plan in plan number two. So he's got 710,987. And the TFSA, once again, can be named beneficiaries, go straight to his kids, reduce probate. There won't be tax owing on either of those assets. So that's a fairly solid estate plan. So obviously the winner is getting GIS from 65 to 70 in this case and delaying CPP. Uh, this allows us to invest the majority of his RSP and his Lira for another 10 years without touching them uh, and a lot of his TFSA as well, like half of his TFSA. So we can invest these three accounts, most of them for the long term, can really ride out any potential turbulence in the next few years and then actually see some real like investment returns later if that's what happens. Because that's why his money's in cash, obviously, is because he's worried about the investment risk. So that's where we're talking about uh, setting things up like that for him. Uh, option three is obviously a little bit harder to implement than all of the other ones. Uh, this is something that I would recommend working with a certified financial planner that even understands this to implement a strategy like this. Definitely doesn't work for everyone. It just uh, is something that would work for him and I actually think makes sense in his case. Uh, so that's how I would do it. I'm just going to talk a little bit about how to invest the money. 
So the non-registered that we have to pull out in the next five years would just go into a high interest savings account. Uh, the 105-ish in the RSP that will turn into a RIF, which I said could potentially go into a GIC ladder. Uh, the RSP and the Lira could go into a balanced or even a more conservative portfolio than that. We've got 10 years to invest, so we're not too worried about market turbulence if we've got that kind of a time horizon. And then same with the TFSA. We could split half and half. One half could be in really conservative or cash or high interest savings because we're going to need to use it from 65 to 70. And the other half we could actually invest. And we could even be a little bit more aggressive with that half because Based on my scenario, we're never going to ever have to touch that money. So why not try and invest it for the long term and make some serious money with that one? And lastly, he just wanted to talk about reducing probate. Saskatchewan has pretty low probate fees of 0.7%. That means like if your house and everything's worth a million dollars, then you're going to owe seven well your estate's going to owe seven thousand dollars to the government of saskatchewan before uh, all of the remainder gets you know given out to your heirs that doesn't mean those are the taxes owing taxes are are totally different but your primary residence and your tax-free savings account are completely tax-free upon death at least right now I'm not saying that they won't change that in the future i think the federal government is going to add an inheritance tax or an estate tax to try and make up some of the money that they've been giving out uh, over the pandemic because they're need going to need to find ways to increase our taxes to pay for this somehow. Um, so as of right now, that would equate to about five grand on on his estate. Uh, we could cut that, like I said, by naming beneficiaries uh, as on the TFSA. It's as simple as that with registered accounts, RSPs, RIFs, LIFs. Uh, uh, you can name beneficiaries that will go outside of your estate uh, if you don't want to pay pro probate. But that can complicate your estate planning if you're trying to like get equivalent amounts to different people. So I would definitely think about it a little bit before you do this and maybe talk to somebody about uh, different ways to set it up. In his case, it's fairly simple. Uh, another thing, if he looks to sell his condo later in life, he can't live on his own. He needs to move into a home or something like that. Uh, you can talk about the idea of pre-gifting the money to your kids. Something I'm going to talk about a little bit in the future is sort of some ideas for boomers that do have uh, more money than they need entering retirement to maybe start uh, gifting that a little bit in sort of strategic manner to their children before they pass away. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much his plan in a nutshell. I'm going to try and do one of these a week. Uh, we've just been really busy. We're trying to grow. We're trying to do a whole bunch of things. So uh, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, uh, you know, please reach out if you have questions, if you want a, a financial plan or to potentially work with us. We're, we're happy. We're trying to grow the team and uh, trying to work with as many Canadians who, who want our help as we possibly can. Um, Please subscribe to the channel and uh, we love to see the comments and, and love to see us. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you soon.